So this is getting very interesting. Uh, we're just days away now from another test of former President Trump's power in the midterms. How much pull does he have? He is campaigning for Dr. Oz in the Republican primary race for an open Senate seat of Pat Toomey in Pennsylvania. So here's the latest Fox poll. It shows Dr. Oz in a three-way battle with Dave McCormick and Kathy Barnett for the GOP nomination, with almost 20 percent of voters saying they're still undecided. So as you can see, because I can do that math, <laughs> this could go any which way. Uh, Dr. Oz is going to join us live in just a moment. But first, to senior national correspondent Rich Edson reporting live from Pittsburgh with the whole picture here for us. Hi, Rich. Hey, good afternoon, Martha. And it really could go any way here. And it wasn't too long ago that it was two names atop that list. You have a surging Kathy Barnett. That has drawn the attention and criticism from the other candidates and from former President Donald Trump. Now they notice us. And now they're nervous. And they're nervous because we're winning. And I love it. So I am so very grateful to you, all of you, because it's because of you that I'm surging and the surge is real. And with that attention comes opposition research and a look at previous tweets and statements, including many that are Islamophobic and homophobic, and a statement uncovered from 2010 that includes, quote, make no mistake about it, homosexuality is a targeted group in the Bible, right along with cheats, drunkards, liars, foul mouths, extortionists, robbers, and any other habitual sin. Barnett has generally refused to address these comments. The other candidates are reminding voters about them. One of those candidates, Dr. Mehmet Oz. He secured President Trump's endorsement, which has been part of his campaign. President Trump warned me, you know, when you're an outsider, the insider the establishment, they come after you with everything they've got. And I've been able to stand on my own two feet very proudly and, you know, and, and live up to the promise of my campaign. Then there's former Treasury official, Army veteran, and hedge fund CEO David McCormick. He's polling among the top three. He has the backing of Senator Ted Cruz and former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. The future of the country is at stake. You need somebody who has your values, Pennsylvania values, Judeo Christian values, someone who understands duty on our country and is going to put America first. Meanwhile, today, the largest paper in the state, the Philadelphia Inquirer, has finally come out with its endorsement in this race. Absolutely nobody. Philadelphia Inquirer is saying that basically with abortion rights at stake and right-leaning candidates who can agree on the 2020 election, the choir and the editorial board has chosen not to endorse any of the Republicans running in the Senate primary or the one for governor. Martha. Rich, thank you very much. Joining me now, Dr. Medmet Oz, uh, who is in this race, and it's a tight one, as we said. Uh, Dr. Oz, good to have you with us today. Um, it, it's very interesting to watch this race because you've got a lot of dynamics here. President Trump is supporting you. Um, he came out to address this surge from Kathy Barnett, and here's what he said. He said she has many things in her past which have not been properly vetted, and if she's able, but if she's able to do so, she will have a wonderful future in the Republican Party, and I will be behind her all the way. Dr. Oz is the only one who's able to easily defeat the crazed lunatic Democrat in Pennsylvania. A vote for anyone else in the primary is a vote against victory in the fall. So um, he, he sort of, you know, threw her a little bit of um, positive reinforcement there. I guess, you know, do you think he's hedging his bets a little bit? Not at all. We did a teletown hall last night, and he was very clear. He said, we know very little about her past. She cannot win in November. Frankly, every time Kathy tries to answer a question, it leads to a lot more questions, which is why she's not answering any questions. But imagine if you're a Democratic uh, a pollster or a partisan, and you're watching a woman who said openly homophobic and Islamophobic statements, made all kinds of uh, allegations that were passed. We can't even ver verify some very important parts of her history, and she won't respond to questions from anybody. So it makes it very difficult to vet her in a way that Republican primary voters will find acceptable. Thankfully, President Trump has already said very clearly, I'm the America first candidate. He said, and I'll quote him, he said, I was smart, tough, and would never let you down. Those are the characteristics that Republican primary voters count on. You got to be smart enough to understand the issues, to understand what Democrats are trying to do. You got to be tough to deal with the withering criticism of the opponents, including the press, like the Philadelphia Inquirer, which if they had endorsed anybody, would have sunk their candidacy. It's a badge of honor that they don't endorse you. And finally, you got to, you know, I promise you won't let people down. When folks go to sleep at night, they got to know you'll do the right thing for them. Even if it's a difficult decision. 
So when you look at the polls right now and you see how close the three of you are in the top spots there and the number of double digit folks who are undecided at this point, here's one of the theories out there about how this could go. And um, it, it goes like this. Barnett is largely splitting the MAGA vote with Oz. McCormick has no reason to stop her mojo. Let her eat into that disaffected, rural, Trump-loving base as much as possible. This is from David Cantonese, uh, who's a Washington-based McClatchy political writer. That subtracts from Oz and allows McCormick to squeak through the two of them and eke out a victory on the calculus of traditional Toomey Republicans plus a divided Trump faction. What do you think about that theory, Dr. Oz? I don't buy it. I don't think you need to read hieroglyphics to figure this out. Uh, Kathy Barnett is very popular in the Philadelphia area. It's where she's from. Uh, she's you know, a, a new idea, a new person. A lot of folks were getting confused by the negative advertising. I've had $35 million aimed at my head from outsiders. So despite that, I'm still in the lead. Uh, and I'm quite confident that we're going to prevail next Tuesday. I'm pro-life, pro-Second Amendment. I understand how much energy is important, not just to this Commonwealth, but to us dealing with inflation and making sure our country's energy uh, dominant. I've also been tough on the border on crime. People know exactly what I stand for. But yep. most importantly, Martha, like you, I've been in people's homes every single day. In my case, for 13 years, people know what they're getting. And in a, an environment when you get scared of a lot of things you don't understand, going back to someone that you're comfortable with, mm -hmm. that you know has always been there for you, has fought for you, and has, has got scars because you fought for you, that's who well, you'll vote for on May 17th. Yeah. I I want to squeeze in a quick poll. I only have about 30 seconds for an answer for this, if you if you can. But you say that you Washington's getting it, it wrong. So right now they're talking about spending forty bill forty billion dollars to, uh, to Ukraine aid. Do you support that? Do you think that's a good idea, given what's going on in the country? I'm not going to throw $40 million at any problem unless I know what it's going to be used for. This is what Washington has been doing wrong. Billion. They literally think they can cure everything with money. Use it wisely. I'm not sure that's true in the Ukraine, although I would support them in, in a clever, effective way. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, you will see. Uh, Dr. Oz, thank you very much. We'll be watching the race every, every twist and turn in it.